What's happening, folks? Geologist Philip Prince talking today about this really crazy looking lake. Uh, when I look at this thing, I see an eye. Uh, other folks might see something else. But needless to say, uh, this is an unusual looking water feature on Earth's surface. Um, I would like to say that this is, in fact, the most unique, whatever you want to call it, lake on the planet's surface. But that is far from the truth, because if you zoom out on Google Earth, it quickly becomes apparent that this lake is not alone. And in fact, it's got a lot of friends. Uh, just about anywhere you look in this particular area, you will see a lake that looks something like that first one that uh, that we took a look at. Now, this is on the Lena River Delta. Uh, this is in northern Russia in Siberia. Slowly but surely, we'll zoom out here on Google Earth to be sure the screen has time to catch up. As this happens, it becomes very quickly clear that there are a whole lot of lakes uh, that look like that funny eyeball looking feature we started out with. Um, the Lena River is a really, really big river system. Uh, Siberia is a huge landmass, of course. It can have plenty of large rivers. That's the Lena River Delta. If we keep zooming out, get a sense of where you are on the planet's surface here. Got Alaska, the Aleutian Islands, Kamchatka Peninsula, and the Lena River got Lake Baikal down here, uh, Earth's deepest lake towards the bottom of the screen. Now, being in northern Siberia against the Arctic Ocean, of course, a very cold climate uh, here where the Lena River is meeting the ocean. It's depositing huge amounts of sediment, which is why there's a large delta here. And certainly that delta and the presence of the lakes here is no coincidence. Uh, you wouldn't see lakes like this. Uh, if there were bedrock exposed at the Earth's surface. So the lakes are most certainly a product of the large amount of sediment that's been deposited here. Uh, but exactly what else is going on that makes them look specifically like this, uh, the jury's still out on that. Uh, as you're going to see in this video, uh, not only are lakes not alone in this particular area, if you cruise around the Earth at this latitude and look at places where large amounts of sediment have accumulated, uh, you're going to see features that look like this. And one of the prevailing theories is that these are thermokarst lakes, which means they're related to thawing of the upper bit of frozen soil uh, each year when the temperature warms up. Uh, that may be cyclic with climatic shifts, depending on how deep that thawing goes year to year. But one way or another, uh, this is a high latitude Arctic feature. Now, the first lake that we looked at, it's a little over a mile across. It's about two kilometers across. So these are good sized lakes. Uh, when you see them from this view and there's so many of them, uh, you would get the sense that, that they are quite small. And some of them are, but certainly these are, are not just sort of like a neighborhood pond kind of feature. They're good sized and they're large enough to develop waves uh, when wind blows across them. And wind uh, has long been thought to be one of the reasons these lakes uh, actually look like they do. Uh, the one right in the center of the screen right now makes her a very nice example uh, of how wind might impact the development of these lakes. Now, not the initial formation. Uh, again, presumably that's a freeze-thaw type of thing. But when you look at this lake, something that stands out is the sand on its western margin. And the sand has this kind of funny outline. That's because that sand has been blown by the wind. Uh, so in this particular area, the prevailing wind is going to be blowing from east to west. You can actually see blown sand here on the edges of this channel as well. And as that wind blows, it's actually going to get that water in the lake moving and circulating. Now, you can kind of sketch this out on Google Earth here. So we would have the prevailing wind blowing like this. That's going to produce the windblown sand outline that you see here on the downwind side of the lake. And in terms of what happens in the lake water, I've seen this illustrated uh, actually in two different ways. Uh, so the wind, one way or the other, is going to push water. And I have seen it suggested that's going to make the lake water circulate like this on the south end, like this on the north end. And ultimately, that circulating water is going to 
eat into the margins of the lake at its ends, and it's going to make the lake get bigger, but it's going to make it get bigger uh, actually 90 degrees to the, to the prevailing wind direction. So what's interesting about that idea is that uh, you might initially think when the lake's elongated, it's going to be elongated because the wind is blowing down its long direction. Uh, apparently, it has been proven experimentally uh, that that actually is not the case. And indeed, uh, like first shown there, and consistent with how that sand is set up, uh, the wind direction is going to be is going to be east to west. Now, the crazy kind of iris of the eye looking appearance of these lake bottoms, you kind of see these funny little lines here, really beautiful pattern. Uh, presumably that is because there is sand that is being moved around in the lake by that by that wind action. So even though the lake is, you know, standing standing water, the water is by no means static in it, particularly when there's a lot of wind energy to push on that water and, and get it moving. And certainly in a place like this, one thing that you don't see uh, are trees and very low elevation surface here, close to sea level, no trees. Uh, this is going to be a very windy place, and certainly that blowing sand is visible here in a lot of locations, not only around the margins of the lakes, but also on the edges of these uh, of these flowing stream channels. Now, something I mentioned earlier is that these lakes are not only in good company here within the Lena River Delta, where there's hundreds, thousands, who knows how many of them, that all look sort of eerily alike. I mean, if you got the trypophobia thing going this this might be kind of a tough landscape for you to uh for you to look at uh if you make your way to the east at a similar latitude so at a similar distance uh north of the equator turns out there are plenty of consistently oriented lakes to look at uh they don't all have that precise kind of eye appearance in every case now some of that may depend on the time of the year when the Google Earth imagery was taken, I actually don't know the answer to that. But in the area we're looking now, of course, you got several of these elliptical lakes. And these are interesting. They they sort of align uh, not only in parallel with each other, but they also align um, sort of northeast to southwest on what looked to be almost like low hills or something like that. Would not be surprised if these are old strand lines, if these are like old old shoreline horizons. Don't know that for sure, but there is some sort of a grain in the landscape that appears to be causing the lakes to kind of cluster in certain areas, but, you know, cluster in, in an orderly fashion. Now, if you keep going to the east, again, staying at that same latitude, you're really never going to get away from these features. And of course, the landscape is absolutely covered with lakes. That's something that you see a lot in high latitude settings where there where there is sediment at the Earth's surface and also where there's bedrock exposed, particularly when it's been carved up by glaciers. But the oriented lakes are very much a product of, uh, of a sediment covered landscape. And they don't all have to be, uh, you know, sort of long and elliptical with that goat's eye kind of shape. Uh, the ones you're looking at here obviously have a very consistent shape and orientation. It's just in this case, it's um, it looks almost like a flower or something like that, but it's kind of tilted to the northwest. Um, every lake that you look at right here has sort of a sharp south edge. It has a sharp east edge, and then it has this kind of diagonal northwest edge. Uh, you have shallow sand on the east and the south edge and all of them, deeper spot in the middle, and, and even the way that the, the sand appears to kind of circulate and then come back towards the middle of the lake. That's something that you see in, in several examples here. Uh, so that consistency in shape, even though it's not that long elliptical shape, uh, is another pretty good support um, that, that some really systematic control like the wind uh, might be involved in actually sculpting these lakes after they initially form. And looking in this area, even, even the smaller ones, uh, the one underneath the, the hand right there is really, really tiny uh, compared to this neighboring feature, but you can see that that triangular shape is, is still consistent there. So these really, really beautifully show the, uh, some of the, what, what I guess is like almost like rippling underwater um, of, of the sand and the shallow parts of the lake. 
So where we're looking now is quite a bit east of the Lena Delta. Okay, so there's the Lena Delta. Where we're just looking, we're actually going to step over to Alaska now. So completely different continent, uh, at least when sea level is uh, is as high as it is today. But because we're looking to the same latitude and the similar surface materials, absolutely no shortage of uh, consistently oriented lakes here. And this area has actually been the one that uh, at least American geologists have, have studied the most. If you Google uh, aligned lakes or oriented lakes and you throw Alaska in there as well, uh, you will absolutely find plenty that's been written about this landscape. But got that shape going on again. Uh, these actually look quite a bit like uh, the first Lena River examples where they have that goat eye appearance with this sort of elongated dark area uh, and then a shallower, lighter colored area on the margins. And of course, the consistency and orientation here is absolutely crazy. And it goes all the way to the coast. Um, folks have been have been keyed in on this landscape for quite some time. And as you might imagine, just looking as crazy as it does, it's experienced quite a bit of study. So what does it have in common with the Lena River Delta? Um, this is an area of, of unconsolidated sediment at the Earth's surface. It's not specifically like a huge river delta, uh, quite in the same way that the Lena is at least today, but there's not bedrock at the surface. Uh, it's low elevation. It's very windy. It has the potential to have that, that upper permafrost thaw. And with all of those ingredients put together, it makes sense that, that you're going to see something consistent uh, with what you see over there in Siberia. Moving further east yet, one more cool example up here, another big river delta. Uh, this is the delta of the Mackenzie River uh, coming out of northern Canada. And you can actually see the Mackenzie there, this nice light colored line carrying a whole lot of sediment uh, produced by Glacial erosion ultimately making sediment very, very available to this river. And northeast of the delta proper, um, I don't know if this is an older part of the delta, if the, if the mouth of the river has migrated that significantly, but really cool oriented lake example here. Again, uh, these have more of like, a, like an elongated triangle or almost kind of like a candy corn shape kind of appearance. Uh, I've heard folks comment on the heart-shaped appearance of some of these lakes. It looks like that might develop uh, when two of the lakes sort of merge with one another. But sure enough, even though it's not exactly that same elliptical kind of shape, the idea is the same, where there's a number of lakes, their orientation is consistent, and their position in the landscape, their latitude, everything else is, is ultimately pretty consistent, right? So today, uh, you're not going to see something like this at lower latitude. Uh, where I'm coming from in South Carolina right now today, of course, this is not going to be going on. An interesting question, though, and one that relates very closely to South Carolina, is was there a time in Earth history where you where you might have seen features like this elsewhere on the planet farther away from the poles? Uh, and there is interesting evidence that features called Carolina Bays on the coastal plain uh, of North America along the Atlantic Ocean uh, are actually the remnants of these big swarms of aligned lakes, much like you see at northern latitude. Now, what are the lakes we're looking at here take to form? Um, you need that cold climate, needs to be wet, high water table. You need to have the unconsolidated sediment, prevailing wind. Mix all these things together and you, and you set the right stage for it. Now, of course, today in eastern North America, uh, you certainly don't have the climate thing going. And the wind scenario is, is really not there either today. Uh, now, things were quite different on the Earth's surface about 100,000 years ago, and really certainly throughout uh, throughout the Pleistocene, so about 2 million years ago to about 10 or 12,000 years ago. During that period of time, when, when things were a little bit different, uh, you might have had the necessary ingredients to make something like this happen uh, on other parts of the planet's surface. That's going to get its own video, because it's sort of its own question, but Features like this are just a really interesting reminder that on the Earth's surface, uh, there's actually great potential uh, for order and, and regularity in patterns. So you don't need you don't need human influence 
to make things line up and sort of match up in terms of geometrically similar shape. Uh, just the way the natural systems work alone is actually capable of doing that when the right conditions are in place. Uh, we'll put some of the Google Earth coordinates for these places down in the description. But if you're in Google Earth, you can search for, uh, for example, the Lena River uh, in Russia. Google Earth will fly you to some part of the Lena, and all you'll do there is go north. Um, that's sort of a funny thing. Of course, in the U.S., like the New River, if a river flows north, it's like, oh, wow, that must mean something special. Um, plenty of north-flowing rivers, particularly in Siberia. Uh, that's just because that's the direction downhill is you have this nice Arctic Ocean basin and rivers don't really care what the ocean's called as long as it's sea level, that's where they're going to go. So you can find this place by picking out the Lena River Delta and going just to the west very easily, punch in the coordinates or copy and paste them for the other locations. You can check those out as well. But these landscapes are definitely worth a look um, while they are not necessarily unique this as you've seen in the only place on earth you see this uh it's pretty much one of a kind and to look at it from this perspective uh it's always interesting to think that something like this can arise completely naturally without anyone actually trying to make it look disorderly so uh take a look at the carolina bays next um and hopefully you'll be able to see similar patterns to what you see here preserved in what is today a very forested and very different landscape.